Hello, dear friends of Autogefühl. Welcome to another episode. And you have wished that we review another Audi. And well, here we are with the all new Audi TTS Roadster. You've maybe seen we've reviewed the Coupe last year and uh, I'll also put the link in the video description. And now it's Roadster time. Spring is coming and we are very much looking forward to test this Roadster. Of course, there are a lot of things they have in common, the Coupe and the Roadster, so the same basis, um, of course. But there are also unique changes which only account for the Roadster. And this is one of the very few unique cars where you can say before doing the review that it will be really a lot of fun. So join up there. And we can directly start with the exterior here. Here we have the optional matrix lights, um, quite impressive and they also fit in this new design scheme which is kind of sharper in comparison to the second generation. The TTS especially has this very huge front grille and also got this aluminum look here to make it brighter and more aggressive. What accounts for all coupe and convertible versions, normal TT and also TTS Roadster, is that the Audi rings moved up here to the hood. Before that they were in the front grille, now they are on the hood and that's kind of a resemblance to the Audi R8. So that makes this car, the TT, the smaller car, also a little bit more mature. And especially here in the TTS we got the bigger air intakes here in the lower part as well. So Altogether, of course, we have a more, a more aggressive look with the TDS, just as it should be. From a side profile, we can first see, just in general, that the size has, well, basically remained the same. Actually, the all-new TT, also here the Roadster, has even become a little bit smaller. So it's three millimeters lower, two centimeters shorter and one centimeter smaller. So, well, that's nothing to do with the chassis itself. It's um, more that, you know, design has a little bit changed and so where you don't really feel the length. What has actually changed um, a lot is the wheelbase. There's a longer wheelbase now to um, make even more space in the interior. That's quite interesting. Well, and here about the design features, we still have from the second generation this cover curve here above the wheel, which is kind of unique for the TT still. About the alloys, just from serial production with the TT Rosa comes with 17 inch alloys. Then with the TTS, you get 18 inch alloys from serial production. And here we got optional the 19 inch alloys. They are still a good choice. They have uh, enough comfort. Uh, and still not too complicated in everyday driving. So I would not go for the 20 inch because you get scratches there too easily. 19 is okay, but also the 18 inch, which are serial from the TDS are also fine. Then if we continue with the sideline, here with the TTS Roadster, we got the aluminum side mirror caps. And of course, the whole side profile is a little bit stronger in the lower part, especially this design curve below here. And then, what is very special for the TDS in general, or for the TT Roadster, we got just this one straight design line and that makes the car so stringed. It's this stringed design line and that really says, I'm a design icon. I don't need so many curves to define my profile. That's just fine, that's just enough and I'm a very sporty car. And two things that were especially changed here for the Roadster. First of all, we got the stronger A-pillar that if the car rolls over, you are very well protected. Just from the figures, that doesn't really happen. And especially for this kind of a sports car, you rather spin around, you don't really flip the car. But you know, you have to be safe in case. And so this A-pillar is much stronger than in the coupe. Um, altogether, the chassis is mixed from steel and aluminum. And of course, the second big thing is the roof. Actually, it's quite light and they have saved three kilograms of weight now with the new roof. It has a Z form to close and open again and it takes about 10 seconds and you can open and close it until the speed of 50 kilometers.
let's go to the rear and we see well there hasn't been so much changes in comparison to the second generation but that's not bad actually because if something is already good why change it you still got that prominent design here at the rear part and uh, especially here with the TDS you got four exhaust pipes very gray with this shiny aluminum style chrome style sorry i really love it when it's chrome because it stresses really the power and we got a rear diffuser and i think this is very well done because you know it's of course from light material um, but you don't have this um, this black jacket structure there which looks kind of cheap here it's in gray i think that's um, that's better than than the black one also with the chrome line above that and then there's also one special chrome feature at the rear which is kind of also typical all already for the TT and I want to show you that in detail. And here it is, my favorite feature, it's the fuel cover and you know with the six screws here, very well done. And then what is also quite neat when you open it, it's automatically the inside cover is open so you can start your fueling process. And then quite close here is also the small rear wing, I think it's good that it's integrated and we can open it manually as well, that you can see how it's really working. Usually it works at speed like 80 and 100 kilometers, it opens and closes automatically, so you don't really, really need to push it manually. And now before we get to our driving impressions, let, let's look beneath the hood. Of course, for such a special car, we got also got the hydraulic dampers and um, the whole engine room is well quite of clean as we're used from Audi. This one is of course the top TFSI, the turbo petrol engine we have here in the TTS, 310 horsepower. All engines that are available right now are four four-cylinder engines and they all got two liters of capacity. This case here, the 310 horsepower and the normal TT Roadster would be then 230 horsepower, but the same basic engine. And then there's also a TDI available, 2 liter diesel with 184 horsepower. We have tested that one as well in the coupe. I can also just recommend the diesel really. Um, well, of course here for the Roadster, it's also about the sound. And then the petrol engine might make more sense because you also have the funny sound feeling then. And we are going to check that out right now while driving. Ah, that's the pure roadster feeling in this sports car. So incredible. The acceleration figure here is 4.9 seconds from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour or 0 to 60 miles an hour here in the TTS Roadster. Here in the TTS you got the special racing sound and uh, you can also adjust it a little bit. Um, we got different driving modes here, um, we got an auto driving mode, a comfort driving mode and we also got this adaptive suspension set on comfort. Then I can put the Audi drive selector, I can see also here in the display in the front and I can put it to the dynamic mode and then we also have the better sound here and well we are in the convertible here we can really hear the sound from the back when we're all really sitting in the car there it is <laughs> so what do you think well I must say um, I really like it so and then to the general driving feeling this is here already just the top sports version, the TTS. There will be a TT RS later on, of course, um, but not right now. Um, but it's still quite comfortable with the ride, so they don't didn't uh, really exaggerate it. So when you just have the normal ride on the street, even in a dynamic mode, it's actually quite comfortable. You don't have this very rough feeling. It's also okay for the long term. And then if we get to the dynamic part of the steering, I think this one is also a big change. First of all, the steering is quite of progressive. That means I don't need long steering ways to really have an effect on the road. And it's just one turning of the wheel around and then you have the maximum input of the wheels right and left. So now let's finally get to the roof. This is really interesting, so just watch the roof process. I told you it's a that form. 
so it falls on this way and uh, it should last about 10 seconds so check the counter below there if that's really true we see the wind cut behind me gets lowered automatically it's optional by the way the electric wind cut well and now it's kind of already done and the windows move up as well I can lower them again, of course, but basically that was really, really fast, I think. And then we can just turn uh, the pros around again. Let the sun shine in. And then we can also see another detail when the windows move up now. We see they're really round here. It reminds me of the Porsche Boxster. It's really some nice piece of glass work uh, i think very amazing and it's also good for um, you know the basic uh, wind features um, but i can tell you already this car is really for summertime not like the a3 convertible where you can ride like all season um, we got some nice new features now i'm talking about later but um, basically this is really a summer sports car So, and welcome here to the interior now. I think this is kind of the area where, well, the most changes have happened in comparison to the second generation of the TT. Here we got the Super Sport seats because we are in the TTS Roadster. They are serial with the TTS, but you can also pick them optionally for the normal TT. You can lengthen the seating area and then we got the waffle structure here at the seats. Very beautiful, also with the white contrast stitches. And another optional feature is up here. We now got a neck heating in the TT. Well, basically this was reserved for Mercedes models so far and you could also, for example, get it with Peugeot. And now finally it's also available in the TT. We've seen it in the um, S3 convertible um, earlier last year as well, but now it's finally also here. And it actually works also pretty good. It's not quite important for very cold days because it then got a very big jacket on uh, anyway. But you know, for something in between, where you get, for example, a light jacket here, as I do have now, and then you can put some heat in the neck. That's quite neat. Then, if we continue here with dashboard, also a special feature here with the TTS that we got another surface on the dashboard, and that looks really premium alike. It's not leather, but it doesn't have to be. Um, it's a really very interesting structure here, yeah, also just when we're feeling it, and I really love it. And then we here got the combination between the digital instruments and things we can still control with knobs and buttons. And I think that's kind of a very good compromise already found here. And we got these details that we can control the climate inside the vent itself. And also the nice special feature is of course that you can change the seat heating also in the vents. It's at the left side here. Um, first of all for the seat heating, three levels and then the neck heating you can control in three levels here with turning the knob. So that's for the vents and then we also got everything the area here around the shifting lever. Here we got the S-Tronic, that's the DSG dual clutch transmission, works flawlessly as we are used from. Very nice aluminum look here and we also got a very clean central console area. Um, this one is here, this magic button where we are, can also control everything with just our, our finger or if I can move inside the map. And then finally we got the new all the virtual cockpit here we've already seen it in the coupe um, you don't um, have the satellite navigation from zero production but you do have the virtual cockpit from zero production so every tt comes with a virtual cockpit with the virtual instruments but here that satellite view with the navigation that is optional and that is very expensive 2500 euros for example in germany optional even if you already picked the tts but here, especially in TTS, we got the RPM meter, very in, huge in the central position. Um, that's of course because the racing style is stressed and then we can change it again that we got the speed in the lower right and the RPM meter in the lower left. And finally, the most important thing with the sporty car for me is the steering wheel. And here again, I just can say Audi is really leading in here. Flat and end, very nice surface contrast stitches on at the inside and also just the grip handle is so great and you really get full control and very important here is as well you can of course 
put it up and down and also towards you and back again. Even if you're a tall person, you can move towards the steering wheel and also move the steering wheel so far towards you that you still got the very sporty handle and can control it all the way. So that's really well done here and thought about as well. I think it's just so enjoyable to drive this car and it's really a driving machine. You got the combination of the really enjoyable roadster and the pure sporty driving machine and for me I would always go for the roadster when I pick the TT. I'm not sure which car I could compare it right now to because um, other racing cars are maybe you know a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier and here the basic weight is 1320 kilograms for the normal TT and the TDS is well about 100 kilograms heavier but still it's um, still that light and agile that you really feel that every command is directly transported onto the road. So what do you get an impression from the driving here? I think it's just superb, pure fun driving machine and I would also love to hear your comments or from the impressions you get of the Audi TDS Roadster so far. A quite nice feature is also the rear view camera. It is optional as, uh, well, everything of the equipment here. In. And we only got the central screen here in the virtual cockpit, so also the rear view camera is integrated in there. And this is a quite unusual view, I must say. Um, but it works pretty well because you yeah, just have this central view here. And we can see here as we are closing in to that tree, we have a very clear view, also a very good resolution. And we also see that the lines change here. You can see where are you actually heading to. And also when you put it to the front gear again, you can see how the front wheels are going to change and how you see one turning around of the steering wheel and that's enough to change the wheels all the way. And just a short look at the trunk. Of course, you cannot expect too much from it. It's a very steep opening, so you can actually put something in here. You get a lot of space in here, that's quite okay. But it's not quite high, so, well, a small suitcase should fit in there, that's no problem. We also got a quite a practical net here to secure your belongings when you're going on the racing style and it goes all the way in there. So, it, well, the pieces can be quite long actually, but you know, not too high in their space. But I think for Roadster, that's quite okay. So let's conclude about the all new Audi TTS Roadster. Of course, it has been a very fun drive and I really love the car. The TT is one of my favorite cars overall on the market because it's just so agile while driving and you still got a lot of comfort. Especially in comparison now to the second generation, I think, well, the little bit of sharper design is uh, very nicely done, but you know, the second generation has also been very beautiful already. The biggest changes have really happened in the interior where you got yet very modern infotainment system now and optionally also with the satellite nav included in the virtual cockpit. And also about the turning knobs at the vents, for example, that's also kind of great news for that. Well, and basically from driving, it has become even more agile, especially the steering is now more direct and also more progressive. That was also very pleasing to me. You don't have this dead zone in between from the steering um, anymore. That's quite nice. And I think also the roof system has improved. It's uh, faster and also looks better when it's closed, in my opinion. So, and at the same time, the ride has become a little bit more comfortable even. I think it has a lot to do with the seats itself. It offers more space even for tall people. So, well, it has always been complicated to make an already good car even better. But I think in this case, they have really done it. The only thing which is kind of disappointing is that when you buy a basic TT, it's really naked. You get almost nothing then in there. So you all have to pay it extra and then the TT really gets quite expensive as well here for our TTS. 
So let me know your comments on that car, also on this uh, Vegas yellow color or maybe what color would you pick. And if you would rather go maybe for the diesel, for the normal TT or here for the TTS Roadster. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you at the next Auto Fuel review.